Hey guys, it's Michael. Unfortunately, I'm back in the United States and Yemisee's still in Korea. I miss Korea a lot. There's so many great places to visit and so many things to do there. But one of my very favorite places is Daejeon. Daejeon has the nickname No Jam City, which is kind of a Koreanism, meaning it doesn't have anything to do. It has no jam. And we think that reputation is totally undeserved. As I was going over all the footage I've captured over the last three years while staying in Daejeon, we thought it would be a great idea to make a top 10 list of things to do in Daejeon. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Daejeon is the fifth largest city in South Korea. Located in the center of South Korea, Daejeon is both the name of the province and the largest city in the province. First off, Expo Park. A lot of Korean cities have an Expo Park where they show off everything their city has to offer. And Daejeon's is one of the best for sure. There are two sections to Expo Park on either side of the river, Science Park and Hanba Arboretum. Let's start with Hanba. The Arboretum is a massive park with many plazas, water features, sitting areas, and flower beds. In the summer, you could spend hours roaming through the the beautiful grounds. There's also a large stage area where events are held throughout the season. The park is also home to several museums, the Daejeon Museum of Art, the Lee Eun No Museum, an insect ecological center, and a lot more. There are hundreds of places to sit down here, which makes this the perfect place to have a picnic in the summer. Just a short walk away across the famous Expo Bridge is the Science Park. The park consists of a massive plaza, a reflection pool, the Hanbit Tower, and several other science and convention centers. The park really comes alive though in the warm months when at the center of the park there's a water and laser light show. The fountains dance like 25 feet in the air synced to popular music and it's super cool to experience. You get to sit right up close. There are also sometimes food trucks around making it a super great way to spend the end of the day. Between the Science Park and Hanba Arboretum, you could literally spend your entire day in that area of town alone. The entrance to Expo is free and is easily accessed through public transportation. Korea does parks incredibly well. The green spaces are everywhere and they're always really clean and super well designed. I love it so much. Next up is Sunset Park. Sunset Park is an area located on the east end of the city up on a hill, making it the perfect way to watch the sunset in Daejeon. It's a bit of a hike, but it's worth it because on the way up, there are alleys that are covered in cool graffiti work. And at the top, there are several cafes, but the one we like is called 5%, which has great drinks and a huge windowed area to watch the sunset, either on the balcony or inside. As long as the weather is good, you're guaranteed a beautiful sunset from here. Just up the road from the cafes is a public park with a ton of cool areas, including this really famous windmill and even more viewing areas for the sunset. And there's also lots of walking paths that are lit at night as well. The park is free, but public transport can only take you to about a 15 minute uphill walk away, making it kind of accessible, but it has a little bit of a hike. All right, next up is Sung Sim Dong Bakery. If there's one thing you know about Daejeon, it's probably Sung Sim Dong. This bakery is famous all over South Korea for its amazing pastries and desserts. There are several locations, but the main branch is near the east side of downtown Daejeon. Everything in this store tastes amazing. I really recommend their garlic bread and their squid ink bread. In addition, the bakery items are all incredibly affordable. Also, the bakery is easily accessible off of the main road. So the bakery definitely surpassed expectations. Oh yeah, for sure. That was okay. really fun and so yummy. Next up is Yusong Foot Spa. This is one of the main attractions in Daejeon and for good reason. This spa uses real underground hot spring water to relax and reduce the water is slightly alkaline and it's said that it has healing properties for the skin. In fact, there's an entire plaque there telling you all of the health benefits. But it's an incredibly relaxing and calm way to wake up in the morning or hang out in the evening. It's super soothing on your feet and we like it a lot. When you're done, they have an air powered foot drying station and a large park you can walk down as well. The foot spa is free and it's super easy to get to by bus or subway. Okay, next is Daejeon Pro Sports. If you're a sports fan, you're in luck. Daejeon has a few ways to enjoy games. First off, there's a semi-professional football team, Daejeon Hana Citizen, that plays out of the FIFA World Cup Stadium in Yusong. The team is admittedly not the largest, but the players are good and the fans are super dedicated, making it a great way to spend the afternoon. Just being in such a big stadium is really fun, and me and Yemesi had an absolute blast the time we went. There's also a pro baseball team, the Hanhua Eagles, that play at Hanbot Sports Complex near downtown. They're a KBO team, and if you know anything about baseball in East Asia, you know they take it very seriously. Be prepared to grab a beer and some chicken, or chimek, scream, shout, and dance all night while rooting for your team. If you're lucky, they might just show you on screen. If you're even luckier, they might even bring you on stage for a game. And if you're really lucky, they might just select you to be fan of the game and let you interview the baseball team's captain who won with an upset with a home run at the bottom of the ninth inning. 
Wouldn't that be amazing? Seriously, though, we really recommend going to an Eagles game or a Hana Citizen game. They're really, really fun. Okay, let's move away from the city center a bit, starting with Gyejoksan. Gyejoksan is a mountain just outside the city. It's famous for its red clay barefoot hiking. This trail lets you climb all the way up the mountain barefoot on soft, cool red clay. The clay is said to have many healing properties and is a mentally relaxing experience that helps you get closer to nature. At the top of the mountain is Gyejuk Sansong Fortress, an ancient fortress from the Three Kingdoms period of Korea. The fortress is large with steep walls and several outstanding vistas of downtown Daejeon. It's a super good place to relax after a hard hike and take some awesome pictures. The trail is absolutely beautiful, it's one of my favorite hikes I've ever done, and it's free and the trailhead is easily accessible by city bus. We are tired but we're happy our feet feel so soft i know it feels like i just got a massage yeah it Fair feels hiking's great next up is puri park on the opposite side of the city is a mountain called bomunsan the area has several great attractions one of which is puri park in korean culture the idea of family and society is incredibly important and there are hundreds of statues in this park that represent the concept of family there's a really nice bridge, some sitting areas, and a river. But the park is really at its best at night when beautiful lights burst with color and the trails along the hills become a melancholy wonderland of relaxing paths and sitting areas. This is a great place to unwind if the stress of the city is getting to you. Pudi Park is one of my favorite places, and it's free, and it's only a short walk from a city bus stop. Also right next to Bomunsan is the amusement park O World. While it's not the largest or the greatest, we actually had a ton of fun here, spending nearly the entire day roaming the park. There are lots of rides, a very large zoo, some live performances, a flower area, and a bird sanctuary. There are a lot of photo ops here, and the zoo was surprisingly large, with a ton of great animals. Too many to show, in fact. But one of the highlights is the safari bus, which gets you up close to several large animals, as well as some bears who love to dance and spin for the tour. Admission is roughly 15,000 to 35,000 won or 20 to 30 US dollars and is easily accessible by bus. For the price, it's a super great way to spend the day. It was a really fun day. We saw a lot of animals. We had a great time. Oh, okay. cool having a whole park Next is Jongtaesan Forest. This is one of the most beautiful places in the province and one of my favorite places in the entire country. The park is covered in large ginkgo trees and it has many areas to hike and relax. The air here feels amazingly fresh and the skywalk has some of the coolest nature views I've ever seen in Korea. It's literally a huge suspended boardwalk several stories up in the air. Admission to the park is free and there's a city bus that regularly takes you all the way out. Just be sure you get there on time to be able to take the last bus back into the city. And you're not allowed to have food here, smoke here, or litter here, so here is super clean. And the air is just so fresh. Really awesome experience. Next is Sintanjin. Sintanjin is a smaller suburb on the north side of Daejeon. There are several activities here, but one of the most notable places is the dam, which holds a lot of water for the city of Daejeon. There's a boardwalk as well as a pathway that goes all the way along the incredibly scenic river up to the dam. There are some lovely cafes along the river as well, making this a really great place to rent a bike and ride around for the day. It's a really beautiful walk. Just away from it all, just nice and quiet. Yeah, I like here a lot. Well, that's everything for the main list, but as I promised, let's go on to a few bonus items. First up, Coffee Interview is one of the best cafes in Daejeon. If you know anything about me, you know I'm incredibly picky when it comes to my coffee, and this place does not disappoint. Along with an incredible atmosphere at both locations, this shop is a great place to grab a drink and do some work. All right, Daejeon has a lot of great food, and maybe one day we'll even make it into a video, but our favorite Western food is hands down burgies. This burger joint near the government complex is genuinely one of our favorite burger places in the entire world. We've never had a better burger, period. All you need to know is to get the Godfather burger, an order of garlic fries, and a Dr. Pepper, and you are set for life. We promise. All right, there you have it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope this inspired you to explore the city of daytime. Honestly, there are so many things that we have enough to make even a part two or three to this video. Did we miss anything that you think we should have included? Let us know in the comments below and maybe we can put it into a new video. And if you guys enjoyed this content, then please like and subscribe. It really helps our channel grow. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you later, so peace out.